Ski Television is presented by Columbia Sportswear. Columbia Sportswear, gear for the greater outdoors. Also sponsored by SportingLife.ca, your lifestyle store. The Anukshuk is symbolic of the Vancouver 2010 Olympic Winter Games. It welcomed the world then and continues to do so right here at the entrance to the Whistler Village. I'm often asked what my favorite ski resort is, and it's an easy answer every time. Right here at Whistler Blackcomb. Whistler and Blackcomb Mountains combined to create one of the world's most popular resorts. The numbers speak for themselves. Over 8,100 skiable acres, a one-mile vertical drop, 200 trails, three glaciers, 12 alpine bowls, 37 lifts, and a pedestrian village connecting the two mountains. This year-round destination never ceases to amaze. So when you're at Whistler in Blackcomb, you can expect a variety of snow and weather conditions because it's quite coastal here. You can choose to either discover the mountains on your own or with a group like Extremely Canadian. They've got an awesome reputation here. So I'm hooking hey, up. Hey, Pete. Nice to doing? see you again, man. Good to see you too. Crystal, good to see you and Derek. Right on. What are we going to do? Well, I think we should head up Blackcomb to start with and uh, get skiing in some trees. Right what on. Oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah, really good. Let's go. Okay. When we arrived near the top, the Alpine Bowl was just opening up after avalanche clearance. Goodbye trees, hello secret bowl! Extremely Canadian is a local business born out of a passion for skiing. I've been working with Extremely Canadian for 10 years now. Uh, this will be my 11th season and it, you know it's a great group of people to work for and, and to work with. It feels like they're in business for all the right reasons, you know. It's, uh, we're trying to pass on ski passion to our guests and, and we all have thrown away promising lives and careers, you know, and as uh, contributing members of society to come and do this. So we're trying to just pass on that stoke, that thing that brought us here, to all the people that we ski with. Extremely Canadian has been around for going on 16 years this year and primarily our goal is to take people skiing and uh, help them to learn their way around Whistler Blackcomb, show them some of the off-piste terrain, give them some technical and tactical techniques and tips. Primarily we're geared for, you know, adventurous intermediate skiers or even expert skiers that might want to jump off a cornice for the first time. Delivering the Extremely Canadian product for me is easy. Um, we spend a day on Whistler and a day on Blackcomb and you know essentially what we're doing is taking people to all the places that I'd go skiing anyway and in places that people wouldn't find if they're skiing on their own so it's, it's pretty neat to see that reaction when you, you duck around a rock or over a little hill and all of a sudden you're in a big cool water or, or a bowl opens up and it's places that people wouldn't find if they were on their own and I love that. That's, that's where I think we really differ from, from the average bear, if you know what I mean. The sun popped out momentarily and Crystal took me over to a run called Cougar Shoots. The boys decided to up the ante and dropped into a chute known as Purple Haze. Um, Whistler Blackcomb's amazing place for to take our clients out here. We have a variety of different areas we can take them. We have two big mountains. We know places that are not exactly on the map, but definitely in bounds. And you know, we take the the unknown out of it. And we open up the whole hill to all kinds of people. Uh, we take the worry out of the steeps and the deeps and the, all the features of the mountain. And it's really cool to see people really improve over two days. Essentially, we're all like-minded people. Our clients and our staff are, are very similar in the sense that we want to ski and we want to get as much of it in as we can in the time we have. Um, our philosophy is it tends to follow more of a, a coaching philosophy. There's not so much uh, standing around on the hill and working on ta techniques. A lot more uh, skiing down the hill and working on tactical approach to how we get where we're going to get and 
and what we're going to do when we get there. We've got a lot of depth in our staff and their experience will range from being competitive skiers in, in, uh, in World Cup and NORAM to competitive skiers in big mountain and free skiing and extreme competitions to career ski instructors and career coaches, people that have dedicated their lives to teaching and training people how to ski. You take all those people and you put them together, the experience that we can provide is incredible and something that nobody else that I know can, can truly give. There are several places to refuel on Blackcomb, but we decided to treat ourselves to the upscale Christine's and were not disappointed. Over lunch, Pete told us about the world tours that Extremely Canadian offers. Essentially, after skiing with uh, a lot of clients in Whistler Blackcomb over the years, we realized that our clients really loved doing what we do and loved what we do for them, so they wanted us to take it elsewhere in the world. And about eight or ten years ago, we started to do just that with uh, our first trip to Switzerland. And, and of late, we've been going to Japan and uh, India and various different places like that all over the world. It's a great time. Well, our world tour today took us to the bottom of Blackcomb to Merlins for some beer and nachos. But be forewarned, Apre with the Extremely Canadian crew can run long sometimes. Fortunately for me on this trip to Whistler, I'm staying at the Slopeside Fairmont Chateau, just a few steps away. First class comfort right at the base of Blackcomb. Coming up after the break, it's peak to peak skiing. located at the base of Blackcomb, but Blackcomb is only half of the dynamic duo here. The record-breaking peak-to-peak gondola connects Blackcomb and Whistler Mountains. The spectacular 11-minute journey over top of Fitzsimmons Valley can have you skiing both mountains easily in one day. Insider's tip. Hang tight for a silver gondola. They've got a glass base. It'll give you a real thrill. The Peak to Peak Gondola was a fabulous addition at Whistler Blackcomb two years ago. It breaks three world records and is a phenomenal experience for sightseers and skiers and riders, really helping people move around the mountain and access those favorite parts more efficiently so they can make the most of their day. The Olympics have come and gone, but the spirit is alive and well in Whistler. We've got a phenomenal number of legacies and assets that this community and all of the guests of Whistler can enjoy. On the mountain, we've got the runs that, where women and men raced in the downhill. You can experience that as a guest. We have the sliding centre as well, and then the Callahan Valley where all of the Nordic events were. And so again, anybody that comes to Whistler, a great opportunity to have a little piece of the games. All of those things combine for a truly world-class experience, but it doesn't have to come at world-class prices. One of the focuses here at Whistler Blackcomb is value, and there are plenty of ways to save and have a great vacation. Another misconception that people sometimes assume is that we are just for the hardcore. This is a phenomenal place to bring family with tons of activities on and off the mountain. Now, longtime local and while well, skiing legend here, Rob Boyd, is choosing to raise his family here in Whistler. So, Rob, what's so great about this place? Oh, what's not to like about it? Look around you the mountains, the, the snow, it just seems mm -hmm. to never stop falling. And, um, you know, some of the activities, and there's a lot of other young families here, great activities, great programs, and it's, it's just a ton for them to do. So, who's this little guy? Well, this is Dylan. He's uh, the oldest of my two boys. He's five, and Evan's four. and. Uh, yeah, he's been ripping around this morning. Already told me that he's better than me. So let's see if we can catch him. See if he really is. <laughs> Whistler may be a great family resort, but there is a new place in town where adults can kick back and rejuvenate. 
situated just north of Whistler Village, engulfed in a spruce and cedar forest on the edge of Lost Lake and Spruce Grove Parks. The Skandinav Spa overlooks incredible mountain vistas and valleys. Invigorate and cleanse your mind and body in the hot baths and refreshing waterfalls. Scandinav breaks the myth of what North Americans traditionally think of when they hear the word spa. It's a wellness experience not to be missed. Make sure you allow yourself plenty of time to fully enjoy the tranquility of Scandinav Spa. Hi, my name is Alexander Bilodeau. I'm 23 years old, and I've been a member of the Kenyan Freestyle Ski Team for seven years. My hometown is Rosemere, and I grew up skiing in saint Sauveur ski area. Mogul skiing is just a, a really complete sport. That's, what it, that's why it's super hard. A perfect mogul skier would be a, a really good 100-meter sprinter um, with great uh, skiing skills and a gymnast, too, at the same time. Winning the Olympic gold at home, uh, it's, it's something super special. Not a lot of Olympic athletes have that chance to win at home. When you hear 25,000 people just yelling your name, and after that, like you see the, the, the Canadian flag get raised uh, for the first time in Canada at the Olympics, and you see that anthem, and 25,000 people are singing that anthem at the same time. And, and you're the guy that made that happen, and, and it's pretty special. Definitely my, my biggest inspiration is my brother. He's got so many barriers in front of him, and he goes uh, over them one after the other. He still, he still loves life. He, he, never, he, he enjoys, he never complains. Every, every, every day is a goal for me to, to, to be my best. And, uh, obviously, World Championship duels again, too. Uh, try to defend my title. I've got a great team behind me to, to really um, to stay focused on on what's really important, which is training and, and my next season and, and living my passion as, 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 as best as I can. And uh, I've got a great team for that. Coming up, Leslie Anthony's White Planet. It's time for this week's wet poll. What snow sports job would you enjoy the most? A, an alpine club racing coach. B, a ski instructor. C, a ski patroller. D, a snowcat operator. Or E, a free skiing competitor. Log on to snowsportsculture.com today and take the poll. For many people, skiing is a sphere of perpetual freedom into which they can step at will. And the sweet spot, that which instantly expands the sphere in every dimension, is powder. Whether one is in it or simply wants to be, powder is a realm of constant challenge. It's about words but being unable to speak, about telling but being unable to describe. It's sensations and memories, silence amplifying a heartbeat and the rasping of breath, involuntary grunts of effort and unconscious squeals of delight, inspiration, bad poetry, broken marriages, magazines, Movies, grins, silliness, frozen toes, and ice cream headaches. Magical turns and occasional smacks off of a hidden hazard. First tracks, lost skis. Trudging, navigating, and skiing over, through, and around boilerplate, sastrugi, crust, slab, crud, and other snow junk just to get to the good stuff. A way of feeling, a way of thinking, a way of life, a way, period. Dow. So this is an excerpt from White Planet, a new book by renowned author, editor, zoologist, massive ski fan, I'm sure I've missed something, Leslie Anthony. Leslie, tell us a little bit about White Planet. The subtitle of the book is A, a Mad Dash Through Global Ski Culture, and that pretty much says it all. It's uh, you know, a book that takes place all around the world and all of those places that you would never imagine that skiing happened, like Lebanon, Mexico, China, and some other places that you know, it seems more realistic to spend time in on skis, like Whistler, for instance. And I'd imagine that, uh, you know, with you living here and being based here, there are a number of stories within it about Whistler and Blackcomb. 
Yeah, it, uh, Whistle Blackcomb comes in and out of the book for various reasons, the twin tip revolution, the, uh, the free skiing revolution of the late 90s, and there are so many free riders based here, and so much of what happened in the global ski culture actually started in Whistler and rippled outwards, so it, it features prominently. Now, with all of the different uh, jobs and travels and things that you've done around the world, you've landed right back here at Whistle Blackcomb. Yeah. What is it that keeps you coming back? Well, like you say, I've, I've been able to experience ski culture in a lot of places, and honestly, Whistler's the most diverse place for me. I, everything I want is here. I'm constantly discovering new terrain, getting lost, being scared, having fun. I, you know, I love the people, I love the vibe, and pretty much Whistler has got everything that I need. Fun. One more really quick question. Okay. I know you're a zoologist. You've written a book about snakes, and now, like flip side, you've written a book about <laughs> skiing. I'm so hoping no one would bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> Is your next book going to be about snow snakes? No, but the first book has snow snakes in it. Come on. My next book is about canoeing. Fabulous. I'll yes. look forward to that one. All right. Check this out. Two parking, heli skiing, sleigh riding, snowmobiling, zip trekking, dog sledding, snowshoeing. You can literally come to Whistler for a week, not go skiing, and be busy the entire time. Now they've managed to add one more activity to the list of things to do, and it's just steps away from the Fairmont Chateau. The Squamish Lillooet Cultural Centre is a wonderful addition to the resort community of Whistler and shouldn't be missed on a visit here. So this is the Squamish Lillooet Cultural Center, and it was completed back in July 2008. Uh, this is a great place to bring the family. You learn a whole lot about the, the two cultures that shared this territory here in Whistler, the Squamish Nation, who are from the south, are more uh, and most commonly referred to as the Coastal Salish, and also home to the Lillooet, who are from the north, and we are more commonly referred to as the Interior Salish. Well, when you walk to the doors, you're greeted, and the tour involves a traditional song and dance, also a showing of our 15-minute film, which gives you a brief glimpse into both the nations that are um, involved in, the, in this cultural center. Downstairs, you'll also find in our cafe some of our traditional foods, from uh, smoked salmon candy to our traditional bannock, which is made fresh daily. It's amazing. From the warmth and richness of the cultural center back here to the comfort and class of the Fairmont, there are five restaurants to choose from and I'm kicking back in the Mallard Lounge with some chocolate fondue and this, an Olympic legacy and a Fairmont signature drink, the Triple Lutz, all Canadian ingredients. Mmm, delicious. Coming up after the break, we're going to show you how to deal with this white fluffy stuff. Stick around. Tips with Josh Foster. Sponsored by Columbia Sportswear. Gear for the greater outdoors. Well, we're taking another scheduled delivery of that Okanagan champagne powder here at Big White. The stuff that we're famous for. Got about 18 centimeters of the stuff overnight and it's still coming down. It's gonna be a fantastic day. We're gonna go off and do a little bit of powder skiing and I'll give you a couple of pointers to help you enjoy the snow a little bit more. Come on, let's go get some. So to make skiing in the snow a lot easier, what you need to do is create a little bit of flow and a little bit of rhythm. Well, as I'm skiing through this snow, I'm thinking of being smooth and having a little bit of flow in each of my turns. Well, how do you create that? 
Well, I think personally that it comes from the shape of your turn and how you move from one turn to the next. What I see on the mountain in this snow is a lot of people skiing from the end of the turn or the completion to the completion of the next one. What I want to try is I want to try to ski from the fall line to the fall line. So the middle of the turn to the middle of the next turn. Here's what I mean by that. So here's what I mean about skiing from completion to completion. You see when I almost come to a stop at the end of the turn, the snow piles up, it gets all lumpy and I'm stuck in there and I even my tips of my skis even crossed up there. So check out the difference here. I'm thinking of skiing to the middle of the turn from the middle of the turn before. Fall line to fall line, smooth, lots of flow. Even in this varied terrain, a little bit of a glade as well, I'm thinking of skiing fall line to fall line. You know, the hardest turns to make in powder are the first few. So if you're skiing from completion to completion, effectively, every time you start a new turn, well, it's a brand new turn. Best way to get some flow and some rhythm in your skiing is to think of skiing fall line to fall line, or the middle of one turn to the middle of the next turn. I hope that one works for you. From beautiful Big White Ski Resort, Canada's favorite family resort just outside of Kelowna, British Columbia, I'm Josh. We'll see you next time. There have always been a lot of excellent reasons to come to Whistler, and now there are even more, with all the legacies remaining after the Olympics. Like this, Passive House, which was Austria House during the Olympics. It's now the base for the cross-country and snowshoeing trails around Lost Lake. Of course, there are lots of great cross-country trails around Callahan Valley, which is where the Nordic events happen during the Olympics. Listen, I hope you have the opportunity to make it out to Whistler sometime. I'm Edith Rosa, and that's all the time we have. I hope to see you on the slopes. Ski Television has been brought to you by Volet for sport, for life. Head, skis, boots, and bindings. And by S Magazine, on newsstands at Shoppers Drug Mart locations across Canada.